Now I'll try to keep this section fairly brief. I could really spend a whole semester here learning just what audio is and what it consists of. Uh, but this part is very, very important because if you know what sound consists of and what its nature is, then it makes it so much easier to capture it and manipulate it. I mean, if you're a professional photographer, you'd better know what the nature of light is, right? Actually, when you think about it, photography is really at the same place that we are with home recording. The tools are getting better and better and cheaper and cheaper, but I would always take the photographer who knows uh, what exposure is, aperture, light temperature is over someone who just has the latest digital SLR and no knowledge. You know what I mean? Basically, the right equipment with the right knowledge is an unbeatable combination. I really believe that. So let's look at the three elements of sound and break them down. If we were to capture sound, then we better know what this animal is. And we'll break it down into its three main elements, which is volume, tonal content, and environment. Now, at its core, sound is changes in air pressure. If I snap my fingers, it sends out waves in all directions of air pressure. Those waves of, uh, of uh, pressure make their way to your ears and vibrate your eardrum in sympathy with those waves. And then you perceive that as sound. If there were no air in here, we wouldn't be able to hear a thing because sound is changes in air pressure. That's why in space no one can hear you scream. That's, that's a reference to the original Alien movie if any of you are old enough to remember that trailer. Anyway, get this, your ears are so sensitive to differences in air pressure. You can hear me at a whisper and a yell. Just rub your fingers there. You know, can you believe your ears can pick that up and a massive rock concert? In fact, you can perceive about 11 or 12 trillion different levels in sound. Don't miss what I just said there. Our ears are so powerful, they can perceive about 11 or 12 tr trillion different levels in volume. It would be almost like designing a scale that could weigh a feather and an apartment block at the same time. Our ears are extraordinary. I'm a big fan. <laughs> We then have tonal content. Our ears can also detect the rate of those waves. If I was to play this sound, the fatter string of an acoustic guitar, then we perceive it as an E on the musical scale. But what really happened was that your eardrums were pushed and pulled back and forth in sympathy with that sound and your brain, get this, counted it as happening 82.41 times a second. Can you believe it counted those waves and you perceived it as an E. The next string has your brain counting it at exactly 110 times a second or an A. And then these are the rates for all the other strings. Now, by the way, a shortcut for saying 110 compressions of air pressure, waves a second, is just to say 110 hertz. So whenever you hear, uh, say, 110 hertz, for example, I'm saying the sound wave is vibrating 440 times a second. Uh, once we get into thousands we say, uh, of hertz, we call them kilohertz, or K for short. Humans hear roughly from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, or waveforms that cycle from 20 times to 20,000 times per second. We tend to lose our top end as we age. Uh, but to hear some of those pitches and kind of get an idea of how they sound, let's play a sweep from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and listen to it. 